wonder sometimes why it is that we never talk about heaven. You know, my grandfather was a typical Italian. I don't care how sick he was, you couldn't call a priest because he was sure he was going to die and he didn't want a priest around. I said, like, Grandpa, you're going to die. But he was afraid. He was afraid that when the priest walked in, that was a sign he was going to die. See? <laughs> and nobody wants to know they're going to die. Isn't that a strange phenomenon? Huh? You go to see people laid out in a horizontal position. See? And the first thing you say, now don't they look good? <laughs>
He, he's beyond our imagination. He's beyond anything our poor finite minds can even begin to, to think about. Today, this night as I speak to you, the highest seraphim and the angelic choirs has just now learned something new about God they never knew before. I think everybody thinks it's going to be terribly boring in him. This is the place that's boring, let me tell you. In heaven you'll see your friends your loved ones but they'll be so different see you have to think that the glorified body is different you know because the two disciples go on the Emmaus didn't recognize the Lord one reason is they didn't believe he, he rose from the dead Those two are a real pair. <laughs> I mean, but those two were something that you, you know, you just can't hardly believe that they exist. These two and another one they didn't mention. People, uh, you know, kind of stick together. I think it was one of the disciples or Maybe it was somebody we, they didn't want anybody to know. <laughs> and so, as they talked, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but they didn't recognize him. And he said, uh, what are you talking about? <clears throat> they stopped short, you know what I mean? They stopped right then there, stopped walking, looked at him, downcast <laughs> and said you must be the only person around here who doesn't know what happened <laughs> they said a little nicer than I <laughs> <laughs> I kind of pep up the scriptures <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said what things yeah. about Jesus of Nazareth proved he was a great prophet under their first estate. They never did believe he was Messiah Lord. And he did great things in the sight of God and all the people. Our chief priests and leaders handed him over and had him crucified. Now, our own hope had been that he would set Israel free. That's all they wanted from Jesus. Forget heaven. Give it to me now. Ever hear anybody say that? Forget heaven. Give it to me now. You know, we all ask Jesus for something. Most of it isn't for our good. And so he says, Now beside this, two whole days have gone since it all happened. <coughs> Some women. Let me tell you gals, you haven't been well thought of way back there. <laughs> Some women scared us. Astounded us. And said they went to the tomb. And he didn't find the body. Now, wouldn't you think a real man would have looked around for the body? <laughs> huh? No, they went out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine these disciples leaving town? <laughs> I don't know what they felt. What they think? Well, now, nobody thought, where is the body? Were they afraid he had risen? And if he had risen, 
delighted to deliver Israel. You and I do the same thing in our daily life. God doesn't come up to our expectations and he does not give us what we want. And so we change our entire opinion about God. I'm not asking you for anything anymore. We, but you, let's see these two men. It gets worse as we go along. <laughs> and when they did not find the body, they came back and told us that a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Can you imagine these two going out of town? thing I do when I get to heaven is I want to go after these two disciples. <laughs> Say to them, will you tell me something? <laughs> will you tell me why you went out of town when these women told you he had risen? And they saw two little inferior angels. Somebody would have told me that one of my sisters died. They went to the crib. It was empty and two angels were there. I would have ran as fast as I could run with crutches. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> See? These men... Let's go out of town. It's too much for me. <laughs> Now let me tell you, it gets worse. <laughs> Some of our friends, now they not only disbelieve this hysterical woman, some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but they didn't see him. Sour grapes. <laughs> I'm going to ask another one. Why did you go? Number two, why didn't you go yourself to see he was gone? And number three, what was wrong with your friends? <laughs> I know I won't because I won't care up there, you know. <laughs> but Jesus, oh, he took care of this like a, like a gentleman. You foolish men, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Even God was impatient with these men. So slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and enter in his glory? And poor Jesus starts with no See, I would have, oh, thank God I died God. I would have not had the patience. <laughs> I'd have picked them both up by the top of their head, and I would have gone like this, <laughs> turned them around and said, boo. Him. 
to stay with them. That's what he wanted. Can you imagine Jesus, son of the most high God, been maltreated, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead. He wanted them to beg him to stay. Isn't that awesome? You know, sometimes when you try to pray and you can't. You ever have that problem? Okay. And you know what the Lord's doing to you? Just what he did to these. He pretends to go away. Just so you'll say, Lord, stay with me. Come to me. I miss you. I want you. I love you. That's all you want. It's hard for us to imagine that the most holy God really does want my love. He wants your love. It's hard for us to grasp that awesome truth that he would pretend to go away. So you said, Lord, come back. Don't leave me. He wants to hear you say that. <coughs> because he wants your love. <coughs> well, the most impressive thing about this account, and it's in Luke, 24th chapter. When they went in and they broke bread, that's when they knew him. They didn't know his physical presence, but they knew him in the Eucharist. Isn't that awesome? Do you know Jesus in the Eucharist? Do you know him? 